Hey everybody and welcome to another digital piano review here at Miriam Pianos. My name is Stu Harrison and in this video we are going to be covering Kawai's KDP 110 digital piano. We are just in love with this instrument. We're talking about the action today, we're going to be talking about the sound, we're going to be talking about the various connection possibilities that you have through its Bluetooth and of course we're going to be doing some playing. Be sure to check out the other videos where all we do is actually play the KDP 110, no talking. It gives you a really good sense of what its tones are at home and the comfort of your living room. Thank you so much for joining us and if it's your first time to the channel, we'd really appreciate if you subscribed. Keep you up to date on all things piano and we do our best to reply to every single one of your comments. Let's get started right away. So let's dive right into the sound on this KDP 110. First thing that's worth noting is that Kawai has loaded this up with their SKEX 88 note sample bank. This is a big deal. It's a huge sample and it's a really high quality sample to be equipping with a digital piano in this price range. Uh, and we're talking sort of in the between the one to $2,000 uh, piano digital market. Um, which is pretty crowded. So to load that level of uh, sample up on the instrument, I think immediately gives this an edge in some respects, especially for people focused strictly on tone quality. Um, so it's 88 notes. It means every single note has its own sample that's been recorded on their full nine foot handmade Concert Grand Japan. Really lovely instrument if you ever have a chance to play that on its own. The other nice thing about the KDP 110 is that they've equipped it with 40 watts of speaker power, 20 per side, it's got two speakers. And so uh, you have this really full complex uh, sample that they've loaded up on here and it's being pushed through speakers which are bigger and more powerful than you typically find at this price range. Uh, and so when you're comparing it to instruments like maybe the Roland F140 or the Yamaha YDP140 series, um, the bass and the mid-range presence on the instrument combined with the complexity of the sample is something that's going to be a really intriguing uh, option for you uh, if you're comparing to one or the other. It uh, doesn't mean that you're going to love the sample. Some people find the sample uh, maybe a little bit too uh, mellow uh, or a little too uh, dark or, or uh, too broad, but um, I love it. And I know a lot of people, other, who, other people who have been quite impressed by the instrument. Now, besides from the, the main sample, and that's the one where you, it, the minute that you turn it on, that's just what it's already set to, uh, this is also equipped with several other acoustic piano uh, samples, and you can get them uh, simply by going through the sound select button. So that's the main default one. sort of an electric piano sample set. And Rhodes. And some Hammond, which I think Kawhi's actually done a really great job of uh, for uh, this instrument. And the left pedal actually is already preset to control the rotary function on the Leslie speaker simulator. It's pretty fun. Kawhi also has, a, uh, for a pipe organ, again on a digital, I find like I used to play pipe organ as a high school gig, and so I spent a lot of time, hours and hours and hours of my life behind real pipe organs. And sure, I mean, you don't have a lot of opportunity to modify that sound, but it's a, it's a pretty true sound. 
and we get to harpsichord. Harpsichord is not a sound that I use that much, but I do know a lot of people in the classical scene where getting a real harpsichord to a rehearsal or gig is virtually impossible. Even if you had the money, where are you even going to find one? So having something that doesn't cost a mint with a pretty authentic uh, harpsichord response uh, is something that a lot of people actually use, a lot more than I originally realized, to be honest. And then some vibes and your string sample. So you're kind of covering all of your normal basses uh, with the onboard sounds. So to wrap up the sound or the tone of this, we've got um, the SKEX sample um, going through their harmonic imaging sort of algorithm. Uh, it's 192 polyphony on the KDP-110, which is ample. Uh, lots and lots and lots to play with there. Uh, and of course, it's being pushed through a set of very high quality 40 watt uh, amp and speaker system. Uh, 20 per side. So we'll throw the specs up on the screen so you can check them yourself visually one more time and then we'll move on to the action. The KDP-110 has, uh, I think it's called the Grand um, uh, Hammer Feel Compact 2. I think I got that right. Um, essentially, it's a graded hammer action. Um, and uh, the really exciting thing about the KDP-110 is they've thrown the triple sensor in there. This may be something that's not that big a deal to people or they may not realize how big a deal that this is, but having the triple sensor there increases the accuracy of the MIDI output, whether you're using this uh, to hook up to a computer or a tablet for recording or even just uh, for your own playing within the instrument itself, that triple sensor really does increase the sensitivity and the accuracy of what you're hearing compared to what's going on. Um, and it's something that's kind of become standard on the more expensive uh, instruments in the, in the industry from all of the big players. You go you know, over $3,000, it's a, it's a given that you're gonna get a triple sensor. And you, most of them over the $2,000 also have it at this point. It's pretty unusual to get it underneath $2,000. Uh, and so I commend Kawhi on equipping the model with it. I think it's a really, really great feature. Uh, the keys uh, come with a nice little texture. It's not technically an ivory texture like you get uh, on, say, one of the Roland models in this price range, but there is still some grip, uh, and I like the level of grip. It's a very satisfying instrument to play over. It also has a bit of a, a, a softer, I don't know, bottom to the action, which I find mimics um, a, uh, an acoustic piano a little more accurately than what I'm used to in this price range. Uh, so that's a good thing. So we've got a really accurate output on the action. We've got a nice texture on the key. Uh, it does have um, the triple sensor, as we said. Uh, and so I think it's, it's, it's a well-mated um, action to the sound engine and the speaker system uh, that we've already talked about. Uh, lots to like there. I think really appropriate for a first instrument for somebody just starting out or as just a nice uh, simple stand-in for an acoustic piano for say a rehearsal space uh, or uh, you know a casual hobbyist player at home. Uh, that action is going to feel uh, really nice and satisfying. Best thing of course always get to a store, try it yourself, see if you like it, but certainly I am a fan. Let's now move on to features. The KDP-110 is equipped with Bluetooth, uh, which allows you to connect uh, certain apps to this instrument that, are, that use Bluetooth MIDI. So that could be something like uh, GarageBand, that could be Kawhi Zone apps that allow you to uh, basically take MIDI information in and out of the machine wirelessly. wirelessly. Uh, and it's a very simple one uh, to set up uh, and to get going. So for people who are feeling intimidated by the prospect of syncing this all up with a tablet or a smartphone, let me assure you, it's far more simple than you might be uh, worried uh, that it would or yeah, far more simple than you'd expect is the best way to put it. Uh, in terms of other functionality and features on here, 
Uh, you've got several different modes to split up the keyboard. You can split it in half. You can layer two sounds at once, and that's very easy to do. Uh, and you can also split it so that one hand is one tone and the, uh, the right hand is another tone. It's equipped with an onboard metronome, which is really handy, a basic recorder, uh, and it also has quite a few educational features uh, built right into it. You can tell that Kawhi has uh, conceived of this as something that's going to work really well in the context of a lesson system. So all of the popular method books, literally virtually all of them, have some type of preloaded content that's sitting right inside the KDP-110. Makes it easy as a practice companion piece, and especially if your teacher knows that you have this at home, they may be able to use that and integrate it into their lesson structure for you, um, which would be a ton of fun. In terms of the connections on the piano, uh, we're pretty limited, and this is where the trade-off uh, comes for the price. Yes, we have great wattage out of the speakers. Yes, we've got the triple sensor. We've got really fat uh, samples coming out of the SKEX uh, harmonic imaging engine. However, we only have two audio, uh, uh, rather two headphone jacks out, no discrete audio out, um, uh, which means that if you plug this into a speaker, the onboard speakers in the KDP 110 will shut off. Uh, you can kind of get around that by plugging one of these into a headphone and then the other one into a speaker if you had to do that, which is actually what we're having to do today. Um, but otherwise, it is kind of nice when a keyboard has two separate outs. You're not going to get it on the KDP 110. Sometimes you can't have everything. It comes with a triple sensor system, or sorry, a triple pedal system rather. And this uh, is worth mentioning because it's, it's, it's a little esoteric, but for some people they're going to find this function or this feature uh, really well thought out. So they have what they call the grand feel uh, pedal system. And that means that Kawhi has simulated the same uh, level of resistance on each of the three pedals as they find uh, on an acoustic grand piano. Because if you are used to an acoustic, you'll know that the left pedal, the right pedal, don't have the same tension. They do have different levels of resistance. And then the middle pedal, which is your sostenuto normally, uh, is quite light. They've simulated that on the digital, so it feels a little more authentic when you're using the three pedals. I think that's pretty cool. I never even thought about that until um, you know I started reading about the function and I realized, yeah, I guess I, that does kind of add an extra layer of familiarity to it. The unit only comes in one finish. It only comes in the rosewood finish that you're seeing here on camera, um, but it is a pretty versatile finish. I think it's going to work in the majority of situations. Comes with a slick looking key cover to keep those keys free of dust and debris when you're not using it. Uh, and you've got a uh, music stand that can be in the upright position or very, very easy to just fold down. So that pretty much sums up everything that we've got to say about the KDP 110 from Kawhi. Uh, a really great uh, piano substitute for people who want to keep their budget under the $2,000 range. Almost kind of a must research model, in my opinion, uh, if you can get to a store that has one, and especially if they have one side by side with either a Roland uh, F140 or maybe one of their RPs uh, or a Yamaha YDP make a really, really great comparison. Please be sure to check out the playing video of the KDP 110 where all we do is uh, play through the instrument's most common uh, sounds. There's no talking, so it just gives you a better sense of the tone. Uh, and of course, if this is your first video that you're seeing, please do subscribe. You'll be kept up to date with all things piano uh, and any new reviews, you'll get a nice little notification. So. Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate it. We're here at Miriam Pianos. I'm Stu Harrison. We'll see you back for next time.